So good evening there and welcome back to the channel. It's the third night in a row where it's been super clear here in the Netherlands, but also extremely cold and super windy. I'm just a little bit tired, but I'm still very motivated to shoot the stars here, so especially Orion above this lighthouse here at the IJsselmeer. I was going to set up my tracker above the dike, but when I came up it was so windy there's no chance that that's gonna happen. So I think I'll scout some compositions first. I'll shoot the foreground and make a reference shot where I want Orion and then come down again to set up my tracker and uh, start tracking Orion. So uh, let's go. So I really hope you can hear me because this turns out to be one of the most difficult shots, shoots I've ever done. <laughs> this was supposed to be one of the most easy ones but it's extremely windy, extremely cold here. <sighs> yeah, I'm uh, just freewheeling here. I'm uh, making shots of the foreground on 14 millimeters, otherwise it's not wide enough. And uh, yeah, I'm just... Yeah, doing some very short exposures while holding my tripod <laughs> and uh, yeah, maybe I'll bracket a little for the uh, lighthouse light. I want to make sure there's just enough uh, detail in this uh, foreground so that the path of the dike leads into Orion there. And I hope I'm done pretty quick because, whoa, shooting star right through Orion, nice. Um, yeah, because it's getting cold and it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> But it's a beautiful composition and also a beautiful location. I should come back here somewhere in the summer, I think. Yeah, I'll uh, make some backup shots. I'm just shooting at ISO 6400, uh, f2.8 and shots between yeah, 15 and 3 or 2 seconds. Yeah, I just hope I have all the data because I have no idea. It's uh, difficult to think with this wind and this uh, temperature. <laughs> but still, clear. Lighthouse, nice composition. I'm not complaining. I'm just cold and uncomfortable. So uh, let's get on. So while I am battling the wind and the cold near the lighthouse, let me tell you a little bit how I planned this shoot. It was uh, January the 9th and we see that Astro Darkness kicks in right about 7 o'clock. And I wanted to shoot Orion and we see here that Orion is just rising about that time in the east-southeast. So uh, I looked up a location which I had on uh, Google Maps, pinned on Google Maps for quite some time. Uh, it was a lighthouse near Enkhuizen, it's called the Ven. And as you can see uh, in the direction of the southeast we shoot over a relatively dark area, the IJsselmeer. I also checked uh, on light pollution map and you see the lighthouse is around here and if we shoot through the east southeast we would shoot over the Isol lake. And uh, if we zoom in a little bit at the lighthouse, um, what I normally do, I uh, just drop a marker here and we take a look at street view. I could already see that I could park my car here relatively easy but I also see that there is a street light position here which could potentially pose a problem. Uh, I also see that I can stand up on the dike somewhere here so maybe we can hide the street light on the dike which I was able to do as you just saw. Um, yes, but I still had to shoot my sky exposures, uh, but before I'm going to do that, let me tell you a little bit more why this lighthouse is so special. So let's get back to location in Enkhuizen. The reason I'm shooting at this lighthouse is because it's a special one. Uh, it's a uh, very old lighthouse. I think it's even the oldest lighthouse which was built in the Netherlands. Uh, it's built in the year 1700. I looked it up on Wikipedia this afternoon. And it was one of the three lighthouses which led uh, the ships uh, from the Wadden Sea to the then called Zuiderzee, which is now the IJsselmeer, to our capital city of Amsterdam. And this one uh, is still operational and it lies beautifully below a dike and the dike itself leads into a curve uh, into the southeast into the star constellation Orion right now so uh, 
yeah, I think that should work out pretty well as a composition. <laughs> okay, so I've come down. Uh, there's a lot less wind here, but I really don't like this spot at all to set up my tripod. There's a street light there. There's a street light there. Bright light of the lighthouse. I'm not totally sure if this track shot's gonna work, but if it is, I think someone in Germany, Jan Andersart.ig on Instagram, would be proud of me because he is the light, the Astro Light Pollution Master. So uh, let's give it a shot and uh, see how it turns out anyway. What a night. Okay, I've uh, <laughs> had to look up Polaris just a bit. It's just above the lighthouse. I'm just blinded by the light, but uh, found it. So uh, I think we can polar line now. <sighs> if I'm to have any shots uh, here, it's uh, not going to be from here because I'm getting incredible flaring from the street light. So uh, I'm afraid I have to go back up into the wind and see what we can do. Not looking forward to it, to be totally honest. see I've uh, come back up at the dike. It's extremely windy here. In fact let me try uh, to block the wind a little bit. I am, have no idea if this works. As you can see I have not set up my tracker because there's absolutely no chance I'm going to track here. Um, all my shots will be unsharp. Uh, I've decided to just do a regular stack of uh, shots of 15 seconds, a high ISO. and. Uh, yeah, I could also have done maybe just uh, some single shots uh, stacked there where I shot my composition uh, 50 meters back, but uh, yeah, we're here now. I'm just winging it and um, let's uh, click away some shots and uh, see if we can blend it. I, have, I don't think I'm going to uh, pull out a lot of H alpha detail or something, but uh, well, still a beautiful location, really clear night, but this might have been one of the most uncomfortable astro shoots ever for me. <laughs> but still I'm enjoying myself. Oh, what's cold. <sighs> okay, so we're back in the car. I've put my heating on. It's not kicking in uh, yet, but I hope soon. Um, yeah, I, a trend, I attempted to shoot uh, the sky without a tracker there up in the dike in the wind and the cold. Uh, I think I made about 10 to 15 shots and then I, uh, I uh, call it quits. I have no idea if the shots will turn out any good actually. Uh, I'm not really hopeful but hey, always shoot and you never know what's uh, coming out. Uh, actually I'm not even sure if this will ever be a uh, vlog but hey, uh, if it does, here it is. <laughs> the stuff we do for astrophotography. But hey, I'm not complaining because it's a third night, clear night. Um, if this, this doesn't turn out to be good, uh, well, so be it. Uh, I, at least I had fun. Um, if it does turn out at least any interesting or something, here is the shot. For now, I thank you guys again for watching. And I really hope I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. But before I reveal the final result, let's take a look at the RAW files. Uh, first, for the foreground, I shot a lot of exposures at various settings, just yeah, trying some uh, different things. But these four I uh, thought looked the most promising. Um, this is the exposure I ended up using. Uh, actually, let me just uh, put up the original RAW file. It looks like this. And basically, after some um, color balancing, uh, putting the lighthouse straight and pulling the shadows up, it ends up like this. It looks pretty good. Um, but if you zoom in, you also see that there is a lot of noise, especially in the uh, shadow areas. 
And that's because this was shot at ISO 8000 on 40 millimeters f2.8 and 5 seconds. I timed it uh, while the lighthouse light was going off, but uh, they returned some afterglow, which uh, made it possible to get some details here also in the bright lighthouse light. And it also casts a little bit of light on the foreground so that the path comes out really well. Uh, to clean up the noise, uh, I use the noise reduction function of Lightroom nowadays. It's pretty good. Um, if you run the noise reduction, if we zoom in again, uh, this is how the shot comes out. I think that is really good and really usable. It's also not extremely sharp but way sharper than I anticipated uh, standing there in the wind while holding my tripod. Um, looking to the sky exposures, I shot about 20 and this is how one raw file looks. Um, I stack those in Sequator and uh, it comes out like this. Um, I always make a, a starless version to edit further. I also made a tutorial about it, how to do that. Um, I do that in Starnet and so that I can uh, process the nebulosity instead of uh, just blowing out the highlights of the stars. Uh, after I uh, edited that, uh, stretching the data, dehazing a little bit, uh, color balancing, etc., it comes out like this. So you can barely make up some H alpha detail, a little bit of the Milky Way here, the Rosette Nebula. Uh, after that, I put back the stars, uh, which remained uh, not blown out, and uh, yeah, with their original color. So Beetle Goose, for example, remains lovely and orange. Uh, after that, uh, I use a software plugin called Star Spikes Pro. Uh, this is without and this is with. So, uh, yeah, you can um, uh, make those star constellations pop out a little more. It acts as a sort of star glow filter, but then in, this, in the software. So, uh, this is without, this is with, and yeah, Orion uh, and these star constellations pop out really better this way, I think. Uh, after that, I did some final tweaking, making it pop a little more. And yeah, this layer is interesting. Uh, I have been fiddling around, experimenting a bit with a dynamic background extraction layer from PixInsight and blending that subtly back in. So this is without and this is with. And you can see that the uh, Milky Way details, also the color of the H-Alpha Nebula come out a little bit better. Um, I might make a tutorial about this in the future, but at the moment I am no expert yet. Uh, I have to thank Matej Mlakar from Slovenia, my astro buddy from Slovenia, for getting uh, me some inspiration on this. Uh, he has been uh, doing this for quite some time, so check him out. He also just made a uh, his first astro vlog. It's really good. Um, yeah, uh, furthermore, I yeah, tweaked it a little bit and this is the sky exposure I ended up blending with the foreground and the result looks something like this. And let me tell you, it is much better than I anticipated on location. <laughs> 